Hello, and welcome to our video on calculating enantiomeric excess. As you've probably noticed, organic chemistry is not very math heavy, but this is an example where we're actually going to use math um, to figure out something pretty useful. This is something that's used in pharmaceutical industries and to talk about drug purity, so that's why it should be particularly relevant. So before we launch right into the calculation, I want to give you a little bit of context. So we need to talk about the properties of enantiomers. So we've already said enantiomers are the um, mirror image that is non-superimposable for a certain molecule. But how did people even know these existed? Well, it came from an experiment by Louis Pasteur, who I'm sure you've all heard of. Um, and he found that tartaric acid crystals, as you see on the right, um, when he was looking at them under the microscope, he saw that there was a difference in them. So if you see the one on the left and the one on the right, what's the relationship between those two? Right? They're mirror images. Now, they're actually pretty complex mirror images in this case because it's actually affecting the crystal structure. Not every molecule does that. Um, but he saw that they were mirror images, and that got him thinking. As you can see, this, this picture actually came from an article from the New York Times about his artistic insight. So it's just one more example of how thinking only science can blind you to a lot of things and having more open interests and ideas can help you a lot. So his, his artistic insight made him notice like those visible differences. So what he did was he separated the crystals that were the different mirror images, so the left from the right. He took tweezers and basically separated them. It probably took a very long time. And then he decided he would get all those crystals separated and measure their properties. So he went through physical properties that you normally would measure, so like melting point, um, density, things like that, like physical properties. And he found they were all the same. So that was not very exciting. So as we see, enantiomers, most of their physical properties are going to be the same. So that's normal. However, he found that in one case there was a difference, and that was with the optical rotation. So we need to talk about what is optical rotation. Basically what this means is you take the chemical, you make a solution of it, so an aqueous solution, and then you put it in front of plain polarized light. So to get plain polarized light, if this is normal light going in sort of all different directions the rays are, and then you put it through a slit, like just a tiny hole that's shaped like a slit, and um, it will have it so the only one direction of the rays can fit through, and so then that's the direction they're going. Then you put them through the sample, so they have to shine through the sample, and that would be something that has optical um, properties, it's, it's optically active, and then it turns them a certain amount. Depending on the molecule that you put in there, it will turn them various amounts of degrees, and so you can measure that degrees of change, uh, that it changed from the original um, orientation, and that's going to be your optical rotation. So that's defined with an alpha, is just the symbol for it, so that would be what it looks like. And that's the alpha for the solution. Now, you also have an alpha for a given molecule that's standard, so they have a standard um, concentration and temperature, and they measure it to see what it is, okay? So, so far, so good. That's optical rotation. So what he found was that if you have the enantiomer, so let's say you have the crystal on the left, that might have a certain number. And then if you make the same concentration of the crystal on the right, that's going to have the same number but the opposite sign. So it's going to turn the um, light the opposite direction. One might be clockwise, one might be counterclockwise. So those are defined as like plus and minus, okay? The other thing that he found is because they're equal in number but opposite in direction, if you have an equal amount of the two different options, that's going to make it be zero, right? Because they cancel each other out. Every single one that turns this one left is going to turn this one right. So that's called a racemic mixture. So whenever you have something that is chiral but it's equal amounts of the enantiomers, that's a racemic mixture. And if you put it in this um, thing that measures the optical rotation, it's going to give you a zero. Okay, so that's important too. So racemic mixture is a 50-50 mixture of R and S. We need to know that. And optical rotation has to do with the amount of stuff you have. Okay? So basically, if you want things to be racemic mixtures, this is fine. But a lot of times in the drug industry, as we sort of talked about in a previous video lecture, um, you don't want that. You want a pure enantiomer of something. Right? So the more um, of one enantiomer you have, the more pure it is. So in that case, they call it enantiomeric excess. It's how much extra do you have of one enantiomer compared to the other. So now let's talk about how they get those calculations. All right, so in order to figure out what the enantiomeric excess of a solution or, mo or drug or something is, you basically need two different math equations and then we're gonna put them together so hopefully they make sense, all right? So the first way that you can define the percent EE is based on how much extra you have of each um, enantiomer. So that would be percent EE equals 
the moles that you have of R minus the moles that you have of the S enantiomer over the total moles, which would be R plus S, right? So technically we need to say times 100 because it's a percent. And also there would be an absolute value sign because you can't have a negative percent. So you can put an absolute value sign if you want. Okay, so then the other formula that you can use is one that you can measure in the lab, which is what you need, right? So percent EE equals the optical rotation of your specific solution, right? So we just put alpha over the standard for just one in So That's the little brackets here. And then times 100 because it's a percent. Okay, so those are the two formulas that we're going to use. Now, to figure out this information, obviously, you'd have to have some information. Like, you would go into the lab and take your solution and measure something, and then you would have a standard value for that same compound, okay? So let's give you some information. So I'm going to give the, you this information on an exam or something. You would have this, okay? So let's take our butanol. So it looks like this, and the standard optical rotation is negative 13.52. So that's given information. So then I might give you an alpha of a solution so that we can figure out what's the EE. So let's say I give you a mixture that has an alpha equal to plus 6.08, okay? So now let's take that information and try to figure out how much R and S we have in that particular solution, okay? So first, in order to do this, we need to calculate what's the percent EE, and then we can get the other information from that. So if we look at the percent EE calculation, we can use the numbers, right? So let's use the blue formula first, all right? So we're going to just take that formula and we're going to put what on top, right? The plus 6.08 is going to go on top, and then what's going to go on bottom? The negative 13.52. I should say this one is also absolute value, so you're not going to care about the minus and the plus, okay? But if I do that, I should get the following percent right? I should get about 45.0%. So first I'll say that for this example, obviously you would probably want to use your calculator. That's not something you would do normally off the top of your head. But if it's something for class, I'll make sure that there are numbers that you can do off the top of your head. All right. So you're not going to have to use a calculator. You still don't need a calculator on the exam or anything. Um, I'll try to give you numbers that are whole numbers. Okay. All right. So now that we know what's the percent and the turmeric excess, we need to figure out how much R and S there is. So how do we know which one we have more of? It's actually going to be based on the um, alpha that we got for the experiment. So it says the alpha for the experiment was plus, right? And the standard we're given is minus. So that means if those are opposite signs, is it R or S? It'd have to be the opposite, right, of what's given. So that means that since it's plus, it would actually be there's an extra amount of S. So we have more of that. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, hopefully. All right, and then so once we know that, the leftover part is going to be a mixture, right? So everything that's not that amount is going to be left over, and it's going to be a perfect mixture. So I've got 45% S for sure, and then I have 55% of it is R and S mixed together perfectly in half, right? So if I just take that number and divide it by 2, I get 27.5. So that means this part right here would be 27.5 S and 27.5 R. And then if I take the S's, I'll add those together, and I'll get 72.5 S. And then my R is easy, right? Because it's just what we already found out, which was the half of the mixture. So that was 27.5% R. So in case you're wondering what happened to the other equation, the purple equation, we actually did use that, right? So if we took our equation here, and then we put in the numbers we know, we used it for part B. So we knew the percent EE was 45, and then we knew that we had or that's the extra S, right? And then we knew that the moles R and S were related, right? So we just used those as our two variables and then we were able to solve for it because we know they're related because one's 100 minus the other one, right? So basically that's how we were able to figure it out. But this way it's just a little bit easier to see if you're not really into math. Um, hopefully that helped. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, definitely you wanna practice it. You can try putting different numbers in it, but basically it'd be the same idea. And like I said, I will not make you do anything. You have to use a calculator, but like normal fractions, I feel like are fair. So like one fifth is 20%, one fourth is 25%. Those kinds of calculations um, are things you'd wanna be able to do in your head, all right? So hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. You can ask me in class or email me. Thank you, bye.